Welcome back to Newsy tonight. A significant win for Ukrainian forces amid efforts to blunt Russia's offensive. This is the Antonovsky Bridge. It's key to supplying Russian troops in southern Ukraine. Ukrainian forces hit it for the second day in a row today. The precision strikes were made possible by recent deliveries of U.S. high mobility artillery rocket systems. National correspondent Jason Bellini joins me now. Jason, Ukraine's first lady was in hiding with her children for the first weeks of this war just trying to survive and now she's in the U.S. in Washington D.C. addressing members of Congress. What led up to this trip for her? Hi Marissa. Well, she was impeccably dressed. She received multiple standing ovations from members of Congress while she was there in the capacity of an advocate for women and children. Why now? The reason is that Congress is about to enter recess and she has this very specific ask for Congress relating to the type of defenses that the country needs as the country is continues to be bombarded by Russia. Her message overall was Russia kills, America saves, but America needs to do more. Those are Russia's hunger games, hunting for peaceful people in peaceful cities of Ukraine. Provocative words from Ukraine's first lady as the civilian death toll from Russia's invasion continues to grow in her absence. Elena Zelenska made an emotional appeal to the U.S. Congress, punctuated by pictures of children killed or maimed by Russian attacks. She asked for more military support for Ukraine to someday make possible what now is not. We want every father and every mother to be able to tell their child, go to sleep peacefully. There will be no more air strikes, no more missile strikes. Is this too much to wish for? Her message comes as the situation in Ukraine grows more dire by the day. Nearly two million Ukrainian refugees have been sent to Russia, according to a tally by officials from both countries. An Associated Press investigation finding many of those refugees are given a, quote, poisoned choice, live in Russia or die in Ukraine. Russia calls these transfers humanitarian evacuations of war victims. Ukraine sees them as forced moves to enemy territory, a war crime. There were people with weapons. Five of them surrounded me and said, you don't get to choose, you'll go where you are loaded. The U.S. State Department is calling on Russian President Vladimir Putin to put a stop to these so-called filtration operations. The agency's appeal describes children separated from their parents, passports confiscated, civilians forced to undergo invasive searches and interrogations. We try to keep everything positive, to not discuss all of this, to not talk about it, as if everything is fine, as if we just changed our place of residence. And U.S. officials believe this is just the beginning. You're seeing ample evidence in the intelligence and in the public domain that Russia intends to try to annex additional Ukrainian territory. Russia is beginning to roll out a version of what you could call an annex annexation playbook. So what does she, what does Ukraine want most right now? Missile defense systems to defend their cities. Now, some of them are on order, but really not enough to defend the many cities in Ukraine that are coming under attack where we've seen scores of civilians being killed. Now, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin today said that Ukraine will be receiving four more of the HIMARS long-range rocket systems that have been so successful in the recent weeks in taking out caches of Russian weapons, crashes of their rockets and mortars, creating these massive explosions. The U.S. is also going to be sending, he said, more tactical vehicles and other equipment to assist Ukraine. But again, those those defense systems, missile anti-missile defense systems, they can't get enough of them right now, literally. Maritza? Jason Bellini, thank you so much.